everyone. I'm here to make another update. I am actually home now. As you can see, I'm in my own home, my own clothes. I actually have been home for about a week now. Officially one week out post second surgery. I meant to pick up the camera like the day that I went home and in the following days afterwards, but I just, every time I went to make an update, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I just happened to find a quiet moment where I felt like I was able to record this. And also this is the first time that I've really had a voice to talk about it as well. Between being intubated twice for the two surgeries, I had such a sore, sore throat and I lost my voice for quite, quite some time. So this is really like the first time that I'm being able to like talk and swallow without it feeling like I'm swallowing glass. I'm gonna go ahead and start back from my last update which was right after my second surgery. So basically, uh, as previously mentioned in my last update, I had to get a second surgery because the baby was still growing inside of me and they were really concerned about that. Um, so... So after my surgery, I basically just, like, Monday I felt <coughs> over overall, like, physically I felt pretty okay. I still had not, like, passed gas at that point or had a bowel movement, not to be, like, too TMI or anything, but, um, because they have to, like, inflate your intestines with CO2 after, um, or during the surgery. And, um... So it was just like really uncomfortable. So that was really uncomfortable as far as that went, but my fever was gone and my migraine was gone and everything. So I felt mostly okay. Um, but the next day, Tuesday, I just slept. Like I just slept all day long. I My blood pressure was kind of low in the beginning of the day, but I guess it kind of came back up enough to where they were comfortable discharging me. My They discharged me with really low blood levels, but I just wanted to go home. I didn't want to be in the hospital anymore. And I came home Tuesday evening around 8 o'clock. And I also started bleeding that day as well. They told me not to expect any bleeding for some reason. But then once I told them that I was bleeding, they said that it was probably my body realizing that it wasn't pregnant anymore. So... But anyway, so I started bleeding. First it was kind of light, um, but then it got like really heavy. So um, I came home Tuesday night and I just spent the next like two or three days basically just sleeping. I think every after everything, like it just was like catching up with me and I just slept for like three days. As far as pain, my pain has been overall pretty managed. I've been able to get up and kind of walk around. Um, took a shower so that kind of makes me feel a little bit more human. I have elected not to tell the boys about everything as far as they know. I was just in the hospital. I just had I was just sick to them and I think for now that's just all I want them to know because I think it would just be too confusing to tell them otherwise. This whole thing has been so overwhelming. Not only has my body gone through so much physical trauma, but then it's like, I just honestly wasn't sure that I would even see my kids again. <laughs> Before my second surgery, I was still kind of in this fever state, and Cody was with me. I was so scared. It was right after my ultrasound, but before my second surgery, and I just started sobbing because I was so scared that I wouldn't see the boys ever again, and I just was crying and crying because I 
was scared that I didn't wouldn't even get to tell them goodbye. And I was just sobbing to Cody about that. So he actually FaceTimed. My friend was watching them while he came to pick me up. Or what we thought was him picking me up ended up being not that. But he ended up FaceTiming her so that I could see the boys for what I thought was the last time. I don't think people really understand just like <laughs> everything about it. <laughs> I just, I didn't know if I would ever see them or my family again or anybody. time to process that I lost a baby already. <laughs> I'm not really sure what to do now. It's it's been overwhelming. Mother's Day was really hard because I didn't know what to really feel on that day. It was just, just kind of like this conflicting feeling, I guess. I wanted to celebrate coming home to my kids, but at the same time it felt wrong because of everything that had happened. And overall in this household, it was just a very solemn day. I couldn't really do anything Cody and I didn't really have a lot of money to do anything, plus, obviously, physically, I couldn't do much. I think one of the worst parts about it is the fact that I don't know anything about the baby that I lost. I don't know how far along I was. I didn't get any ultrasound pictures. I didn't get to hear a heartbeat. I just, I didn't get anything, and that's been, like, really... It's been one of the hardest things is just like not knowing anything and not having anything. It almost just feels like it didn't happen and I don't know. I've been on my own. Cody had to go back to work a couple days ago and it's been really tough trying to manage the two toddlers obviously while he's gone because physically I am limited. <laughs> And I know that they get really bored with me not being able to do much and play with them. And it's very frustrating being limited. Like, I'm very frustrated by my lack of ability to do much. Especially, like, even, like, simple things like cleaning. Like, I'm very limited in what I can even do to help around the house. So that's been really frustrating. I can't go out and do anything. I can't drive. I did get another blood draw a couple days ago. They told me that my HCG numbers were falling appropriately, but I have to now get weekly blood draws to keep an eye on my blood levels because they're still low, and also to make sure that, you know, I have to get weekly blood draws until my HCG is at five or below, I guess. I didn't think to ask on the phone what my numbers were when they called at my last blood draw. They just said they were falling appropriately. But that's really all I have to update on. I also have some back footage from before everything happened that I might try and edit just because I have a lot of time on my hands, basically, just from not really being able to do much else, so... I might try and get that done as well. 
don't know. I guess I just haven't really been feeling up to doing much lately, so... Um, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.